What's up guys? I know I've been MIA for a little bit. I've had some tuning issues with the Mustang and I just figured out how to get everything working again. So let me walk you guys through what I've been up to, the parts that I've replaced to get this tuning issue figured out and how to tune the EcoBoost swaps that you guys are uh, working on. I know I've been helping a couple of you guys with uh, some of the issues that you've been having getting those worked out and uh, trying to get some other EcoBoost swap builds on the road. So let's jump into it. Those of you that have been following along with the build know that I just recently installed a larger turbo and a upgraded high pressure fuel pump along with some 2000 cc injectors to hopefully get the fuel system closer to the 500 horsepower capable mark um, this turbo is not going to do 500 horsepower, but I want to have that safety net there um, to hopefully make 400 or 450 wheel horsepower. That's where the tuning issues come in. Uh, the ant steering ECU, which is right here because I had to take it out, uh, this was not able to control the new high pressure fuel pump. It was missing, well, it's actually on earlier Focus ST software, um, the Gen 1 software and it is missing quite a few tables to control the fuel pump. So I had to find a ECU with the newer software, which luckily was available from Gemsport. So I hit up Gemsport, I got one of their ECUs and installed that and that remedied the high pressure fuel pump issue, but we've been working through some other hiccups. So this car is missing the body control module that would be in a Focus ST. That body control module is responsible for quite a few important inputs to the ECU. Uh, the two most important are vehicle speed and clutch position. They're used by the tune to access different fueling tables and to control the engine. I don't have that, so I've had to kind of work around it in the tune. Luckily, I've been working with Alan over at Edge Autosport, and he has been great throughout this whole process. We've kind of figured out which tables need to be turned off and which sensor inputs need to be turned off. Specifically, there's a entry for uh, the ECU to figure out if the car is in neutral or not. That was enabled and that's based off of the clutch switch, which it doesn't have. So it always thought it was in neutral and would not go into boost, would not make any power. Once we got that figured out though, we started moving along with the tuning. We're still working our way through it. It's currently on 93 octane fuel and it's making like 350 horsepower. It's pretty fun. Um, I would love to take you guys out on the road and show you, but beautiful Western Pennsylvania weather in the spring means that it's been raining for a week straight. So I haven't gotten to drive this too much, but soon enough here we'll be on E85 making close to 400 or 450 horsepower. And that's when it's gonna be fun and that's when I'm gonna take you guys for a ride. But for now, let me take you in and show you what I've done on the interior. Um, in the last video, we didn't get everything finished, so I had to come back and wrap things up. So let me take you in there and show you that. Let me get you guys situated up. So in the last little episode, we were messing around with the head unit and all the radio stuff. It is finally all working in together and looks nice. Might be a bit hard to see because the screen is kind of small. Um, but this is a Sony XAV2000, I believe. It'll be in the last video. Uh, head unit that is installed with the 417 Fox surround. I wasn't able to get it to go in like he does. Uh, he uses double-sided tape along the, the sides to get it to actually mount in. I ended up putting two M6 screws on either side to make it more secure. I mean, the top's still a little bit flimsy, but everything is is in there, the, the head unit's not moving anywhere, the controls are all all good. But this head unit, the reason I chose this was it has wireless Android Auto and ca Apple CarPlay. So I can set my phone down in the center console where I have a wireless charger and still have Google Maps and Spotify and everything. And so far, this has been working great. Um, I, I love it. Great mod to modernize the interior of the Fox. Now I can actually listen to music while I drive and, and have maps up to, to get where I'm going. Another thing you may have spotted is the fire extinguisher. I finally hard mounted a fire extinguisher in here. 
so that whenever I do my track days and drift events, I am safe and can pass tech. I also ordered a rear seat delete from LMR. It's just the small plywood with uh, some cloth covering, but it is nice that it folds up. You can hide a bunch of junk under there, like dirty towels and some cleaning products. Um, it just is nice to have this well, the, the trunk blocked off in the front of the car, it eliminates a lot of the road noise and looks nice while doing it. Now let's get into the tuning process. I have my HP tuners cable here and I have my MPV device hidden away up underneath the dash. So I'll just plug this in here, take the other end, plug it into the laptop. All right, so I've got my new tune downloaded here. We're gonna have to flash this onto the ECU. First things first, I gotta turn the car onto accessory mode. Close the door so we don't have to listen to that annoying ding. So I've opened the tune up here. It opens it in VCM editing software and I can just write the vehicle. And it'll go through, um, delete the old tune, flash the new tune on, and then we will be ready to open up the logging software and check some things out. So the tune is now finished writing. It tells me to turn ignition off and wait three seconds. Go ahead and do that, pull the keys out. Give it three seconds, turn it back on. Click the okay button. And everything's done, the new tune is flashed. Um, I can also show you guys in here, we have total control of everything in the ECU. Um, and one of the things I was messing with earlier, let's see here. Oh. Let's go over to transmission. So the issue I was having, let me get you a better picture here. I'm not going to do the whole screen cap stuff, but this is the issue we're having was the infer neutral here was enabled and it was always thinking that the car was in neutral. So we get back out of this and we'll go over to our close all of it. We'll go over to VCM scanner to see what the engine's doing. We'll fire it up. This is access to everything, every data table in the ECU. But now with the uh, the new tune and the new ECU, the car is much happier now. It revs much better. Get in here. And it is a blast to drive. So. Next video, I will show you guys that, but for now, that's all. So that's it for now. Sorry, it's a bit of a short video, but I've been fighting a ton of issues on the EcoBoost Mustang build. So I will have more content for you guys in the next couple of videos. I do have a drift event coming up at the end of this month. I think it's the 28th or 29th. We'll do some video coverage of that, see how this thing does, if it even does slide. I've got a uh, brand new set of wheels, the same exact spec that's on there right now with some really, really cheap rubber to put on them. Um, some Accelera PHIs, I think they're called, like 80 bucks a tire. So stay tuned, watch the drift video when it comes out. Uh, maybe I'll have some content in between then showing off some driving, but 
We'll see you guys next time.